Today's video is brought to you by NordVPN. They are the fighting Urukai. They took down Boromir. They set fire to Rohan. They blew up Helm's Deep. They are a mighty warrior race. Hello and welcome to the Broken Sword. Today we are looking at the Urukai. The Urukai. That is a word from the black speech that translates to orc folk. They have not been around as long as the standard orc, with their first known appearance coming from Appendix A of the Lord of the Rings, where it says, In the last years of Denethor I, the race of Uruks, black orcs of great strength, first appeared out of Mordor, and in 2475 they swept across Ithilien and took Oskiliath. Boromir son of Denethor, after whom Boromir of the Nine Walkers was later named, defeated them and regained Ithilien, but Oskiliath was finally ruined, and its great stone bridge was broken. These Uruks served the Dark Lord from Mordor, and so bore the emblem of the Red Eye upon their armour. Despite this appearance, it took nearly another 300 years before they were used to a larger degree, and this would be by Saruman the Wizard from Isengard. And it is these ones created by Saruman that we see and know best from the story of the Lord of the Rings, especially made iconic to newer fans with the likes of Lurtz from the Fellowship of the Ring movie and the army of over 10,000 strong that lay siege to Helm's Deep in the Two Towers movie. Uruks were considered basically better versions of the Orc. They could travel faster and for longer periods of time, with them even being able to march under sunlight as well without being weakened. This is different to the Orc as they would be crippled by sunlight, making them weaker and less effective when the sun was in the sky. We get our first acknowledgement of this all the way back in The Hobbit, during Bilbo's escape after the riddles in the dark. Of course they soon came down after him, hooting and hallooing and hunting among the trees. But they don't like the sun, it makes their legs wobble and their heads giddy. Before I carry on let's pause for a moment to let you know about our sponsor for today's video, NordVPN. So now imagine this, you are Theoden King sitting within your halls in Edoras. You realise your aide, Grima, is a spy. You exile him from your kingdom, and now wish to protect any further information leaving your walls and reaching the long fingers of Saruman the wizard. You hide yourself from him and make him believe that you are now somewhere else instead. This is essentially what Lord could do for you on up to 6 of your devices at the same time. They have servers with the speed of the charging Rohirrim, 24 7 customer service and protection anywhere you go from Rohan to Wales, to Isengard to the USA, it does not matter. Another great bonus too, imagine the situation where you're sat at home, you go to put on the Two Towers movie to see the defenders of Helm's Deep rise against their great enemy once again, but no, it is not available in your country. Well, with the help of NordVPN that is no longer an issue, just change your region and boom, like the Deep in War you can now enter in and see Gandalf arrive at the first light on the fifth day. So what have you got to lose? Use our exclusive link that will be pinned in the comment section below or in the description or shown on screen to get your risk free NordVPN deal. This is a limited time offer though so why leave yourself potentially vulnerable online when we can offer you this safety with an unbeatable deal. So with you now safe with the knowledge of NordVPN, let's return to the Urukai. The Urukai were not just faster with better endurance than the Orcs though. They were also larger and stronger than their older counterparts, as well as being smarter too. However, when I say taller, the Urukai, despite being taller than the Orcs, were still not on average quite the height of men, possibly closer to the Dwarves. Saying that though, there were still some individual ones that pushed these higher heights, and so in general that meant, as an army, they carried weaponry closer to that of men rather than the orcs themselves. This means they were more likely to be seen carrying short broad bladed swords rather than the curved blades of the general orc. So far this may sound like the Urukai were almost the perfect fighting machines, and that is really the intent behind what they were bred for. 
However, despite seeing they could, for example, withstand the sun better than the orcs of Mordor, that still does not mean they exactly liked the sun though. A big part for the orcs, with them being a bit smarter and more understanding of things, is that they could be more highly motivated by reward. And we get a good example of this in the chapter of the Urukai in The Lord of the Rings. The orc band began to descend a narrow ravine leading down into the misty plain below. Merry and Pippin, separated by a dozen orcs or more, climbed down with them. At the bottom they stepped onto grass, and the hearts of the hobbits rose. Now straight on, shouted Ugluk, west and a little north, follow Lugdush. But what are we going to do at sunrise? said some of the northerners. Go on running, said Ugluk. What do you think? Sit on the grass and wait for the white skins to join the picnic? But we can't run in the sunlight. You'll run with me behind you, said Ugluk. Run, or you'll never see your beloved holes again. By the white hand, what's the use of sending out mountain maggots on a trip only half trained? Run, curse you. Run while night lasts. Then the whole company began to run with the long, loping strides of orcs. They kept no order, thrusting, jostling, and cursing, yet their speed was very great. Each hobbit had a guard of three. Pippin was far back in the line. He wondered how long he would be able to go on at this pace. He had had no food since the morning. One of his guards had a whip, but at present, the orc liquor was still hot in him. His wits, too, were wide awake. We see from that passage that the promise of man flesh upon their return to Saruman, as well as knowing Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli, who became known as the Three Hunters, were close behind, was great motivation. Even to the point the Urks motivated the Orcs even more to make them move faster. This meant that they could maintain an, an unexpectedly and unnaturally fast pace over a long period of time while transporting their prisoners. On the subject of the Urukai, it is worth mentioning a couple of notable members of their race. These include the following. First we have Ugluk, the leader of Saruman's orc company that attacked the fellowship at Amon Hen, with them capturing the hobbits Merry and Pippin that led to the chase of the three hunters. It is in fact believed, although never stated, that it was Ugluk himself who killed Boromir of Gondor in the books. However, this would not save him from being slaughtered by the travelling Rohirrim not long after. Then you have Shagrat, the Uruk chieftain from the Tower of Kirithungal. He was considered large even for an Uruk. Shagrat was the one in charge when they found Frodo after he had been stabbed by Shelob, and he wanted to follow his orders that were to take all the belongings found back to Barad-dûr. This is where we will now also talk about Thorbag, the Uruk captain from Minas Morgul. He was the leader of the other pack who were there when Frodo is discovered. However, he wished to keep the Mithril shirt for himself. His internal greed was greater than his loyalty, and so went against Shagrat's orders. Here, Gorbag would attempt to sneak up and kill Shagrat with a spear, so that he could claim the best, but he fails. This ends up causing an internal fight which leads to a massive battle where Shagrat would kill Gorbag. This is altered for the film though, where instead we get to see Sam kill Gorbag with Sting. After this though, Shagrat would manage to evade the pumped up Samwise Gamgee and take the Mithril vest to Barad-dûr, along with in the book, also having Frodo's cloak and Sting too. Now potentially we have one more Uruk to mention though, and that is Lurtz from Saruman's army. But of course he was a movie only addition, which by the way, if you would like to see our video on if it was right or wrong to add Lurtz into the movies, then please check that out in the description below or with the link on screen. Lurtz though is shown as the first Urukai Saruman creates, and he is also the strongest and their leader. In the movies he is the one that kills Boromir, but he does not make it to the Two Towers movie as he loses his head against Aragorn. So back to the point really though, how are the Urukai different and better than Orcs? Well, they are bigger, they are faster, they are stronger, they are more intelligent, and they are even able to withstand the sun better too, without being crippled to the same degree. They could turn a standard orc battalion into a well-organized killing group, and were a major strong point to any force of evil. Thanks to the movies, I do have a great love for the Urukai as bad guys. The Battle of Helm's Deep is debatably one of the greatest battles ever shown on screen, so I am definitely a fan of them. They are pure evil and suitably terrifying. 
However, if you have come towards the end of this today, and you perhaps still need a little more clarity on the difference, we also have a video that looks at the differences between goblins, orcs, and Urukai too, so maybe that can also help you along. Link of course will be on screen and in the description below. And that is where I will end this video for today on the Urukai. And that leads me to my question of the day, which is, do you think the Urukai are truly the superior warrior in Middle Earth? If they are so much better than the Orc, then why were there so many Orcs compared to Urukai? Let me know all of your thoughts and theories on this in the comment section below. And also, I'd like to quickly mention our other channels that will all be linked in the description below, and to shout out our patrons. Firstly, we have the Divine Power tier members of Kevin and Abram. You are both awesome. And a big thanks to our Fire Demon tier members of Nasheed, Thembersteel, and Gregory. And as well, I cannot forget the Wizard Staff tier members of John, Andrew, and Jennifer to go with them. You are all true legends of the Bro Hero. Finally, if you've managed to reach the very end of this video with me today and you've enjoyed what you've seen, please hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon too so that you can be notified of all future uploads, and why not drop a like on the video if you really did enjoy it. And thank you once again to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. Remember to check out our exclusive deal in the description or comment section below. So thank you once again if you've managed to reach the very end of this video with me today, and I will see you next time on The Broken Sword.